Hey everyone, it's Madeline again. I'm going to walk you through the sentence correction problem that a lot of people have had questions about. This is actually a problem from our money log. So it's one of the problems that we do during class. But if you haven't seen this problem before, or if you did this problem but it was a long time ago, you probably want to pause the video now, see if you can figure out the correct answer. Okay, so I'm not going to reveal the correct answer right away. Let's work through this together. So I get this question and I start reading, a cheetah can accelerate to a speed of 40 miles per hour in three strides, generating its sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart and augmented by its aerodynamic body with a small head and flattened rib cage. So there's a lot of things going on here. We have several commas and other stuff, but what you want to do is you first want to choose an error to focus on. So when I read this, the first thing that stands out to me and should stand out to you too, is this comma ing modifier. We have comma generating its sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart. This is all one modifier. It's an ing modifier. So you identify the ing modifier and then you ask yourself what's the rule for an ing modifier? And is this following those rules correctly? So the rule for, an IN, for a comma ing modifier is that it has to modify the entire previous phrase and it has to tell us the how result of that previous phrase or clause. How result. So we call this the how result test to test comma ing modifiers. So a cheetah can accelerate to a speed of 40 miles per hour in three strides, generating its sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart. Is generating its sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart telling us how or the result of a cheetah accelerating to a speed of 40 miles per hour in three strides? It is. It's telling us how the cheetah can reach this acceleration does this because it's able to generate the sudden blast of energy. So great, our comma ing modifier checks out. Let's see if we see any other errors in this sentence. So the next thing that I notice is I have this comma and. So whenever I have the comma and, I want to be thinking about parallelism. We notice here we have generating a sudden blast of energy and augmented these two verbs are not parallel. It should say maybe generating blah 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 and augmenting blah blah blah. But as it stands, this is incorrect, so we know option A is out. Great. Okay, let's look at option B. We see a cheetah augmented by its aerodynamic body. Well, this is already weird. A cheetah augmented. Think about what this is saying. The cheetah is augmented by its aerodynamic body. This is not correct. A cheetah can't be augmented by its own body. No. So we can eliminate option B. Now let's look at C. A cheetah can accelerate to a speed of 40 miles per hour in three strides, generating its sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart and augmenting it by its aerodynamic body with a small head and flattened ribcage. Okay, so we have the same comma ing modifier here. We already said that this is correct. And we see we have this and, and they changed it to augmenting it instead of augmented. So we can see now with this and, we have two parallel phrases generating a sudden blast of energy and augmenting it by its aerodynamic body. Okay, so this is parallel. This is looking pretty good so far. But there are a couple other things we always want to look out for. One thing that we see here is we see a lot of its, augmenting it by its aerodynamic body, generating its sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart. So it is a really important pronoun, and it's often an error in sentence correction problems. So anytime you see an it, you want to ask yourself, what is this it talking about? What is the noun that it's taking the place of? So we know for it, it has to be a singular noun, and we know that it can only refer to one noun. 
example, we can't use it to refer first to the cheetah and then use it again, but this time it's referring to the heart or something like that. That would be wrong. So using those two rules, let's look at this it. What is the it talking about here? Well, it seems like the it is talking about the cheetah. So our sentence says, a cheetah can accelerate to a speed of 40 miles per hour in three strides, generating the cheetah's sudden blast of energy by, we replace it here as well, by the cheetah's powerful oversized heart and augmenting the cheetah by the cheetah's aerodynamic body with a small head and flapping rib cage. If you pay attention here, the it works maybe for here and here. We're saying the cheetah's blast of energy, the cheetah's powerful overlays heart. But then here it says augmenting the cheetah by the cheetah's aerodynamic body. This doesn't work. We're not augmenting the cheetah. We're augmenting the cheetah's acceleration, perhaps. So in this case, this it is incorrect and we can eliminate option C. Great, working through this. Let's look at D. A cheetah can accelerate to a speed of 40 miles per hour in three strides, generating a sudden blast of energy by its powerful oversized heart. So we have the same comma ing modifier, uh, which we said was fine. And then we see another comma, its acceleration augmented by its aerodynamic body with a small head and flattened rib cage. So this is interesting. We see here and here we had this and. They took out the and, they just put in a comma, and then this phrase, its acceleration augmented by its aerodynamic body, blah, blah, blah. At first glance, you might think that this is wrong. Uh, because maybe you're thinking, oh, this looks weird. Or maybe you're thinking that this is another independent clause, and we can't link two independent clauses with a comma. But if you look closely, we can see there's actually nothing wrong with this comma, its acceleration augmented. And that is because we can see that this is not another independent clause. It's actually a type of noun modifier. Here we say its acceleration, so that's a noun. And then we have this augmented by its aerodynamic body. This is all describing that noun. It's actually a past participle modifier, talking about the acceleration. So really what we have here is we just have a noun and then a modifier modifying this noun. So this is all just one really super long noun phrase. You may be thinking, wait, what? Augmented is a verb. But it's not saying its acceleration was augmented. It's not saying its acceleration is augmented. It's saying its acceleration augmented. So in this case, this augmented, like I said, is a verb past participle modifier talking about the acceleration. And we really just have one long noun phrase. So that makes this just one long noun modifier. This is actually a specific type of noun modifier that we see on the GMAT sometimes in harder problems called an absolute phrase. Really hard to write. Absolute phrase. So you can look it up um, if you want more information about absolute phrases. Um, but in this case, this modifier is correct. So I don't see any other errors in D. Let's look at E. A cheetah can accelerate in three strides to a speed of 40 miles per hour, augmented by its aerodynamic body with a small head and flattened rib cage. Okay, well, this is interesting. So instead of this generating ing modifier that we had previously, now we have a comma verb past participle modifier. So what's the rule for a verb past participle modifier? Well, it always modifies what comes immediately before the comma, the noun or noun phrase before the comma. So in this case, we have 40 miles per hour, or maybe the noun phrase would be the speed of 40 miles per hour. And ask ourselves, is the speed of 40 miles per hour augmented by its aerodynamic body? No, the cheetah's acceleration 
is what's augmented by its aerodynamic body, not the speed. So this verb past participle modifier is incorrect. And that leaves us with D as our correct answer.